they were very connected to the fans and that was like one of the first groups that sort of did that you know what I mean and they had a like really strong hardcore following all like loads of a whole gang of us from my our school we all went uh, you know regularly and it was all about that everything was about that group they were like the main group at that time you know and it was th this is the first group the first group that was on Ireland and they were really underground at the time and we were all at school and that was like we used to follow sort of religiously the uh, what was called the underground music scene at the time it was like kind of like um, sort of the end of the 60s and the start of the 70s you know what I mean and these things were coming in and they were like a like an underground band first and that their first uh, their first album on Ireland, right? Mott the Hoople, right? And so it's so after they had a thing called Hoople Heads, like in the, in the 1850s and 1860s in the, in America. It was like I don't it come from a book. I can't remember the name of the author, but Mott the Hoople was a book, right? But there was a thing called Hoople Heads, right? And it was like kind of like guys who just like used to prospect for gold, and then um take their earnings, what they'd panned out of, of a field, they take it back to places like uh, well, Deadwood was the place where they, uh, it was like right up there was a mining town like Montana or something, and uh, they actually uh, were called Hoople Heads, so I always thought that, uh, well I found out later that that's what it was, right, maybe Mott the Hoople was uh, one of those Hoople Heads. It was amazing kind of thing, you know what I mean? Because uh, we used to uh, we used to go and see him all over the place. But the thing was that um, I don't know how Mott turned out to be the group, the special group, in a way. But we, it was just obviously I think it was fate, yeah. that really, because that what they were was they were the, the kindest group yeah. around, you know what I mean? And most welcoming when you got to know them. And the the manager used to, the, the road manager Stan Tiffins used to. To, hang on a minute. The road manager Stan Tiffins used to, um, once he got to know you, he used to like let us in, you know, occasionally. Because what we used to do is we'd go to a venue and then we'd try and bunk in in the afternoon. Like we'd like go in to try and get in for nothing, you know. And so what we'd do is we'd like sort of go into the venue, like sneak in in the afternoon when they were sound checking that and like scurry off to the toilets and we'd like hang in there and like till the doors opened, you know what I mean? They, they used to come, bouncers used to come in and uh, check and we'd be in the stall standing on the toilet, like, so you couldn't see underneath and uh, there was no legs. And, um, but occasionally we'd get chats out, like they'd frog march us out before, you know. But and once they got to know you, they'd start letting us in and stuff, you know. And then that was really like, that sort of, um, it was like a revelation, like, that, you know, a group could treat you like that because all the groups at the time were like very much like up there, you know what I mean? And everybody else was like sort of down there looking at them, and then you didn't really, there was nev never that change, you know what I mean? But that, their kindness to us was the thing that really st stuck in my mind, you know what I mean? But I think it's all fate that you find the group that's right for you.